So again, welcome to the City's digital webinar titled LaserFish Workflow and the Digital Mailroom. In this webinar, I will cover the concepts for using LaserFish Workflow to allow your central mailroom to scan and distribute employees' letter mail via LaserFish. Let's take a look at today's agenda. Uh, we'll go over a brief uh, description of what LaserFish Workflow is for those of you who may not already know. Uh, hopefully you do. Uh, we'll discuss the uh, need for the creation of employee folders uh, so that we can send that email, uh, sorry, not email, but the mail uh, that has been scanned to the employee's uh, folder. We will also manage and configure the trustee directory, which allows us to uh, send by default uh, an email and a document to a default uh, folder and a default email address. So we'll, we'll cover that. Uh, we'll briefly discover uh, and look at uh, uh, the discuss the template setup, and then uh, we'll go into a brief demonstration, which uh, will show how it all works in one big soup to nuts uh, description here. And then finally, I'll take your questions and provide any answers uh, that uh, to any of those questions. And uh, so let's get started. So LaserFish workflow basically allows you to automate the flow of business processes and really specifically documents, and therefore especially processes that are typically consist of paper documents that are hand carried around an office. Uh, as we all know, workflow really enhances uh, many business processes, speeding them up and uh, enhancing the efficiency within your office. Uh, there are some prerequisites for creating a mailroom workflow of this kind. Uh, the employee folders are very important. In LaserFish, we'll need to create some employee folders. Uh, and then also, you're going to need to configure the users within a trustee directory. And uh, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, the trustee directory, any user within this directory will have some properties. And we want to configure the user folder and the user email address property. Uh, so in a repository, uh, we can create numerous types of folders. Uh, you can put your employee folders anywhere you want within the repository. Uh, in my case, I've shown an example here where I just put them out at the root. So each employee name is out at the root. And it's uh, with security, I can hide each one of these employee folders so that uh, everybody but the employee and the admin can see them. So really, it's uh, for the end user, going to be pretty transparent, and they would just see their own folder, not uh, anybody else's with some security. But in this uh, example, I've created three employee folders, uh, one for Dirk Pitt, one for Jack Ryan, and one for James Bond. As you can see, uh, these are all fictional characters from books and movies. Uh, and then also, there's a, another folder that uh, I created uh, down below here called one underscore new mail. And this is kind of like the incoming scans folder that you might be used to. Uh, and this is where I'm going to put my scanned mail. And the workflow will monitor that location, that folder, uh, to grab the document and route it to the employee's uh, own folder. So let's take a look in workflow. In the workflow designer, uh, what we want to do is at the very top, click on Tools and then configure trustee directories. This will allow us to set up the trustee directory and then get into it in order to add the users and or groups. Uh, it's a one-time only setup, but uh, you can continue adding users once you've already set up the trustee directory. So this is where we access it. We go into the workflow designer, click on tools, configure directories. The next step is to, when you uh, click Configure Directories, uh, you get this Manage button at the very bottom of the box. Uh, because you don't see anything listed in here in the box, we do need to manage that. When you click Manage, it pops up another um, pop-up window and allows us to add a trusty directory. And there are two types. As you can see here, there's two tabs at the top. One says LDAP. This really relates to a Windows uh, Active Directory. Uh, or a Novel uh, directory structure. If you do not have one of those or don't want to use your Windows Active Directory, uh, we can use a LaserFish directory. But in either case, we need to add one of these entries. Uh, so a tip in my example, and um, you can do this yourself uh, or with the help of your IT, uh, click on uh, the particular tab and then click Add. 
in uh, my example and in my system, I've used the laser face tab and I just click the add button. Uh, then it gives me a choice of server and repositories that are available to me. Uh, in this case, I only have one. And so it's on the server that I'm running and the repository name is available here. And so I would just highlight that repository and click OK. Once that's been entered, the uh, repository is available for me. And then I can click on that repository name in the directory configuration. So I don't have to manage anything yet. I just click on this repository listing here. And this is where I can then go and enter my user's uh, default folders and email addresses. So once I click on here, I get a trusty search box, as you see on the right-hand side. And that pops up, and I need to know uh, what my user's login name is. This is the name that they are using in uh, order to log into Laserfish. Uh, it's not necessarily their full name. It may be a short name. And you want to type that in here in your search value, and then click the Search button. And that will bring it up. Uh, so if you log in with, um, you know, uh, it's not going to be James Bond. You might log in with just J Bond. Um, that's the name you want to use in the search value. When you get the account brought up, these three properties here, the display name, the email, and the default folder, they are going to be blank. And so you want to fill those in. And I would fill in the display name as uh, the full name, really. Uh, so I entered that here. You enter your email address and your default folder. And this default folder, you can browse to it and click on that so that anytime a workflow route to user activity is used, this can uh, allow us to automatically and, and uh, send, send the uh, document to this folder. So this default folder is very important, especially in this particular kind of workflow. So with these settings all set, we can click OK. And uh, if you need to add additional users here, we would not click OK and not leave here. We'd just hit the Apply button and then click on the New Search button up there at the top and uh, search for another user, enter their properties, click Apply, and so on and so on until you're done with the uh, trustees that you're adding to the trustee directory. Uh, so again, uh, this is going to match up to our field name. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a field uh, called employee name. And it's going to be a list field, uh, not a text field. It'll be a list field. And you'll want to edit the list and add the names as you entered them in uh, the trustee directory with their display names. So their full display name should be in this list of employee names because that's going to allow us to match them up and find their email address and their default folder with our route to user activity. So as you can see here, we have an employee name list, and uh, all the names match the display name. And here's an example of a template. Uh, I created a template called Mail. Uh, you can call it anything you want, uh, but Mail is uh, pretty self-explanatory to me, so I chose that name. And then I have three fields. I have the employee name, which you can see is a drop-down list. And then I added a couple other uh, default values uh, just so that we can use them uh, for various purposes. So I can tell who actually scanned the document, uh, the username of the employee who logged in and scanned this letter and is emailing it uh, and dropping it into LaserFish on behalf of the employee and also the scan date with the date and time stamp. And these are default values I've applied as well. So uh, if you have these three fields, you can apply some default values to these fields. Uh, obviously not the employee name, but these uh, two other fields. And that way we can know that the document was scanned by somebody at a certain time so that uh, we can go back and talk to them if we need to. With that said, let's take a look at the real life demonstration here. And I'm going to bring up the workflow design. And if we take a look here, the workflow 
is very simple. It's really doing just three activities. Now these activities are, first it's going to grab the field values that we wanted. Uh, we're going to use the employee name, the scan date, and the scan user. Uh, that's going to be important because we're going to use some of that information to uh, use in our route entry to user activity. But before we route the entry, we're going to rename it. Uh, because the document may be scanned with a odd name, uh, or maybe uh, you don't want to slow down your mailroom employees uh, where uh, they might um, uh, be slowed down and having to rename documents. So if they don't need to rename a document, we can allow workflow to do that for us. And so we'll use some data to rename the entry. You can use any uh, renaming criteria that you prefer. I've chosen to call it mail and then a date and time stamp at the end. Uh, you can do anything you want, though. And then the most important part here is the route entry to user activity. Uh, this allows us to use those uh, directory uh, trustees and to our advantage. And it will route the document that uh, was just assigned with the employee name, and it will send it uh, to that folder. And even uh, we can set up an email. So if we take a look at the activity here, We'll click on the activity, and in the properties on the right side, uh, we can tell it how is it going to uh, route the document. So let's take a look at the information. So we're going to get the user from a to uh, token, right? So we applied the employee name, so that's our token to trigger everything else. So if we click on this value, we then get the route activity options. So in this case, we are going to select the user from our trustee directory. We're going to use a token which is the employee name from the uh, template. And then we're going to find that user by their display name. So that's the importance between having your list field match your display names. Uh, because James Bond won't match J Bond. So we need to look for James Bond uh, that's in our display name. And everything else follows <clears throat> James's email address, his default folder, and things like that. So with that said, we're going to send it to the destination. And we're going to route that folder to the user's default folder. And I can even, if uh, they have multiple folders, we can even create a subfolder in their default folder called mail, uh, which I've done here. So I'm using a combination of dynamic fields and static uh, information to uh, send the document to the correct folder. So this e uh, letter will get scanned and dropped into James Bond's uh, personal folder under a folder called mail. Uh, the action would be simply to move the entry. Uh, the fields, I don't need to change anything or add any new fields to the document. Uh, we could if we wanted to, but there's no need, in, at least in this demo. The email tab allows us to configure a notification email that will tell James that he has uh, new correspondence coming from the mailroom. And if I go and click on the configure email button here, I can use tokens. And in fact, it allows me to route the entry to the user's email. So based on the basic information, we have a user's email automatically grabbed. Uh, I can send the routed entry as a link in the attachment bar. And I even made some text here in the bottom uh, body of the email that says, you have new mail from the mailroom titled uh, what uh, we re renamed it as. Uh, and it was scanned by uh, the scan user our uh, employee who scanned the document at a certain date. So scanned on this date by the scan user. Um, you can do anything you want here, but this is an example of how you use these tokens. And so we've got an email that notifies the employee that uh, he's got a new letter from the mailroom. And with that said, that is the basics. So let's do a brief demonstration. I'm going to go into Laserfiche. I'll log in. And I'm the mailroom person here. And so uh, I won't see necessarily the employee folders, uh, but in this example, I've given myself security rights to see that. But in new mail, uh, what I can do is I can simply scan or import that letter. I'm going to use a sample file that comes from uh, our Laserfish uh, system. I'm not going to generate searchable text. But all I need to do is choose my mail template. I'm going to choose my employee. I'll choose James Bond. Could be anybody else. Uh, we can choose Jack Ryan. 
Uh, and I'm not going to fill out the scan user or scan date because really I'm done. At this point, the workflow will do everything for me. So if I click OK, I then will see that my letter has come in. It's tagged. And all of a sudden, workflow grabs it, puts it in the employee's subfolder, and created a mail folder, and set my email with the mail name, renamed it with the date and time. Very simple, very straightforward, and uh, almost foolproof in, in many ways, especially for your central mail office if they need to uh, uh, do something really quick. This is a very quick way to distribute letter mail to your employees from a mailroom situation. So that is my demonstration of the uh, mailroom uh, making your, dig your mailroom digital and using LaserFish to the best effects. So go ahead and ask me any questions if you have uh, anything there. Uh, let's see. I do have a question here. And uh, let me know if uh, you're not seeing the... Uh, demonstration here on the uh, laserfish um, all right no questions so far so um, the There are additional educational resources on LaserFish. The best uh, way to do this is to log into support.laserfish.com and click on the Education tab. And you can find all kinds of uh, great information about LaserFish workflow and uh, training videos, uh, best practices, PDF uh, documents, PowerPoints from uh, Empower conferences from the past few years and all kinds of fantastic uh, information there on the LaserFish support site. Uh, this video will be available to you uh, in just a couple hours, and therefore uh, you can review that as well. And uh, again, thank you very much for your attention and attending this webinar, and uh, have a great paperless day. Thank you so much.